We're addressing the topic seven, eyes to see and ears to hear. This is a concept that's ancient, and yet to this day, seldom understood. We're gonna tackle it. So quote 29 in the course, it is now incumbent upon them who are endowed with a hearing ear and a seeing eye to ponder these sublime words, in each of which the oceans of inner meaning and explanation are hidden, that happily the <clears throat> words uttered by him who is the Lord of revelation may enable his servants to attain with the utmost joy and radiance unto the supreme goal and most sublime summit, the dawning place of this voice. I just want to draw attention to the fact that the sublime words are the words of this revelation and that there are oceans of inner meaning and explanation, but they're hidden. So they're not obvious. And that's what we have to be aware of. And of course, then there's a reason why are they hidden and that will show itself. It's, it's uh, obviously for those who approach things from a certain attitude, they won't get it. But for those who come with the right attitude towards the Word of God, they will see things that are hidden to the eyes of people who don't approach things with the right attitude. So the key is, let's hope that we can approach things with the right attitude so we can see the deeper meanings. We continue with quote 30. And the disciples came and said unto him, Why speakest thou unto them in parables? He answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. And that's Jesus letting us know that those who came with an open mind and an open heart could hear him. But those who came to attack, those who came to refute, those who came to resist, couldn't see. So he told stories in such a way that those who had their minds and heart open could get the universal truth that was coming through, while others got all confused and tied up into the story itself. This is an ancient technique that the Word of God has always been revealed in. So we got to be careful that we don't let the outward things get in the way of our perceptions. Quote 31. Paul said, When I was a child, I spake as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see through a glass, darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know, as also I am known. This is one of the greatest wisdoms of Paul when he recognized that um, there were past ways of thinking that have to be put aside because they're childish. If ever that was true, it's true today. That the days of superstition and the days of believing in talking animals, etc., has ended. Human beings once had a childlike view of reality that long ago included talking animals, a flat 6,000-year-old flat earth, witches, demons, etc. Today, enlightened people and Baha'is use their faith in Baha'u'llah's vision for humanity, balanced with a science-based reason, to insightfully and wisely create the society promised of old. We're being asked to think with the modern tools of science, reason, but not forget faith and inspiration, and put it all together and we have a different type of religious person, a person well-equipped to take on the challenges of the 21st, 22nd, 23rd, and 24th centuries, etc. So that's why even Paul knew that at the time he was living, they only were given a part. Someday they would see the whole. Someday they could see it because they could face it. They could see the reality of things. That's the age we're in now. It doesn't discount the younger years, the early years. It's just it's time for us to take the responsibility for being modern man.